acceptable fuel standard on the agriculture sector. My name is Pam Johnson. I am a sixth generation farmer from Floyd, Iowa, where I raised corn and soybeans with my husband and two sons, and we raised hogs for 38 years. I currently serve as the president of the National Corn Growers Association, and here today I am the voice of the family farmer and give the perspective of the rural community to this panel. NCJ was founded in 1957 and represents over 39,000 dues-paying corn farmers, and corn is possibly the most versatile crop in the world and demand is at an all-time high. The RFS is a critical piece of our nation's energy policy. It has created jobs, lessened our dependence on foreign oil, and improved the environmental footprint of our nation's transportation fuels. In 2012, the RFS supported more than 300,000 jobs, displaced 465 million barrels of imported oil, and lowered gas prices by at least 89 cents per gallon. It spurs the development of advanced and cellulosic biofuels. In short, it is doing exactly what it was designed to do. When the RFS was initially conceived, corn producers were facing significantly depressed prices, averaging $2 per bushel. Between 1990 and 2006, producing corn was a losing business. As a result, grain farmers became reliant on government payments as a source of income and as a means of survival. This dynamic changed in part to the emergence of the ethanol industry and the certainty provided by the RFS. Now all commodity prices across the board have risen, and without the RFS, it is likely that the entire farm economy would be in a deep recession. There is opportunity once again in rural America. Our two sons and a growing number of young farmers have returned to the farm after college. Corn production has allowed our livestock industry, ethanol industry, and our communities to grow. Due to the tax revenues and job security that the RFS enables, my small community has a new fire station, a remodeled hospital, and my grandson's kindergarten class is large enough to need another teacher. Much of the criticism that the RFS faces regarding food prices, food availability, and its environmental footprint are exaggerated at best and blatantly false at worst. Because the farm value of commodities represents such a small share of retail food prices, the impact of the RFS on food prices is indiscernible. Higher energy prices as a result of increased petroleum costs pay a much larger role. The World Bank found nearly two-thirds of the increases in food price since 2004 are the result of the increased price of crude oil. According to USDA, the farm share of the food dollar is 15.5 cents for 2011. This is below the average of 16.1 cents for the prior 18 years. The farmer is getting a smaller percent of the food dollar. Therefore, it is unlikely that commodity prices or the RFS are large contributors to food price inflation. Corn farmers have responded to demand by producing more corn on roughly the same amount of land. In the last 30 years, corn production has improved all measures of resource efficiency, land use, soil erosion, irrigation, energy use, and greenhouse gas emissions. I am proud to say that corn farmers work hard to be good stewards of the land and the environment. Our farmers continue to produce enough to meet increased demand for corn as food, feed, fuel, and fiber. We know the importance of seeking and embracing practices that will sustain the soil to produce crops in the future. Farmers have increased yields, produced more food, and avoided clearing additional acres of land. This has curbed greenhouse gases equal to a third of the total emissions since the Industrial Revolution. No other industry can claim to have done more. Not only has the RFS enabled our nation to be more energy secure, some consumers have been given better and lower options at the pump. Last Friday, I filled my car to station in Iowa with E85 that was $1.34 cheaper than E10, as pictured on the screens. The RFS is enabling families to choose a gas that is cleaner for future generations at a fraction of the price. NCGA appreciates the subcommittee's work to understand our perspective. We strongly believe that the RFS is doing exactly what it was intended to do. It is successfully driving adoption of renewable fuel alternatives to petroleum, supporting jobs across the country, and ensuring we remain a global leader in developing new energy sources here at home. 
I look forward to hearing the testimony from the other witnesses and answering your questions. Thank you. Ms. Johnson, thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Rennick, you're recognized for five